Welcome back to Sunless Sea. My aim for this episode is to explore. There's about 40% of the map that is just completely dark, and now that I have my new boat, I feel pretty comfortable exploring it. But before I get to that, I want to take care of a couple things. Let's see, what should I do first? Okay, well first, let's do this. So somebody was telling me that... Uh, where is it? Story, London, here we go. So somebody was telling me that if you keep doing this carouse or carouse in Wolfstack docks, if you keep doing this, there's a chance that you can actually stumble upon an interesting quest line. So apparently it is worth it to do this. Of course, it's a random chance as to whether you actually hit the quest line. So pretty good chance that nothing of interest is going to happen, but, you know, costs 10 echo, so no big deal. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's see. Strange night out. I think I've had this before. Yeah, I was unlucky again. Not bad, though. I mean, I gained recent news. I lost three terror, which I could definitely use because my terror is actually pretty high. And all for the cost of ten echo. It's actually not bad. Okay, so I think I'm going to do this every single time that I can. It's pretty cheap. Might as well. What else to do? Um... Right, so I want my hole to be at 100%. So I'm trying to think, if I'm going to repair it, I might as well do stuff that's going to damage my hole. And just kind of get that out of the way. So I believe the Irrepressible Cannoneer. I think if I spend a secret to increase my iron, as it says, unlocked with hole 10, I think that damages the ship. So let's try this. Yeah, so you actually gain two iron. Normally, if you spend a secret, you only gain one point, but in this case, you actually gain two iron and some fragments, but... Oh, I only lost two whole. That's nothing. Let's do it again. Aw. It only gave me one iron. Uh, is that random, or is he... <laughs> has he figured out how to properly repair the ship so it doesn't explode anymore? Let's see. One iron, one secret. Hmm. Okay. Guess I won't do that anymore. I have four secrets left. I do want to keep a couple just in case I can spend them on something. Yeah, let's go ahead and save the rest. Do I still really want to repair my hole for only 18? Uh, I don't think I do. I really don't think it's worth it. Hold on. It's very cheap in terms of Echo, but it is going to cost me some of my, uh, what's it called? My goodwill, if you will, with the Admiral. I think I have like 16 left or something. 18. Costs 3. It's, it's too dangerous. It's only 18 whole, but still. This game has permadeath. It's only 25 echo, it's 3 favor. It's fine. Let, let's just do it. There we go. Alright, we're up to 100%. We're good. Anything else I want to do before I go? I don't think so. I think that's it. Yeah, so if you notice what I have in my hold, I'm 100% full. I have a crap ton of fuel and very little supplies. Which is not good. However, before I do anything about that, there is something I want to do. I've had this slot here, my cook slot, has been completely empty for a very long time. And I've been saving it for the cook at Venderbite, which I didn't want to get for a while because he's kind of expensive. I think he costs about 300 echo. I didn't want to get him because I was saving up for the ship, but now that I have the ship and I have a bit of extra money, I think I should go get him. So I'm actually going to go do that right now, fill the slot, and by the time I come back here, I'm probably going to have less fuel, which means I'll have some room for more supplies. So, should work out pretty well. Oh, yes. Oh, wait. Hold on. That's this night. Ignore it. At uh, somebody's suggestion, I also rebound. Or, actually, I didn't rebind, but I added an additional key to toggle the lights on and off. Which is Q. So now I don't have to keep clicking this button, which means I can micromanage. Or I can send Morse code. Okay.
Okay, I'm actually gonna leave the lights on though, because I have a lot of fuel and my terror is pretty high. It's all in ruins. Um, oh, no port reports? Okay. I guess there's <laughs> nothing to report on, it's just a smoldering wreckage. You know, I probably should have done this before repairing my hole, because I might come across something that hurts me. Probably not. Hello. You are going to die very quickly. A cask of mushroom wine. Hm, like a man handy. I discovered prick finger wastes. Yay! I'd love to vacation there. I'm trying to remember what a cook actually increases in terms of your skills. I, I think it's hearts. But then again, the doctor does that. And they probably have overlapping skills. Let's see. The Vengeance of Jonah. It's you, right? Yeah. Recruit. Recruit the bandaged... I forgot how to pronounce that. Somebody told me how to pronounce it, but I forgot. So I'm not even going to try. Or am I? Was a, no, no, stop, stop, no. Nope. Alright, 300 Echo? Come aboard! Ah, my captain. The things we will catch, that we will consume, that we will experience. We will discover the seventh sensation, you and I. The taste that one tastes with the heart. You there, sailor, careful with the brazing al... al alembic? What the hell is that? It's worth more than your wretched soul. I wonder if you'd like to fry up some behemoth dish. Tasty. Alright, let me equip my cook, if you will. Oh my god, <laughs> he really is bandaged. Okay, yeah, so he does have over overlapping skills with the doctor. Hearts plus six, pages plus three. In fact, he's actually almost exactly the same as the haunted doctor. Hearts plus six, pages plus three. Yeah. He has an ambition for fish. A great ambition. Ooh, I should talk to him. He actually might be interested in the behemoth dish. <laughs> you can see his mustache coming out from under the bandages. My captain, come into my little galley. Mind that pot of sauce. It is... <laughs> Vigorous in the extreme. Oh, look at this. Dine with the bu- Oh, no, 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 my captain. You shall dine with me. Strange catch and muter salt. Okay, so he's very- Yeah, he's very particular. He won't just take any supplies. You need some ingredients. And I did just gain a secret, so let's go ahead and do this and just see what happens. One heart, one secret, okay. Culinary philosophies. To be edible is to be possible to be consumed, and to be living is to consume. Thus we find that the nature of the unliving is to be consumed. In fact, therefore, anything that is not living may be consumed. Okay. <laughs> Alright, cool. Do that some other time. Excellent. Can offer the strange catch. Wait a minute, if I just recruited him, then who's running this place? Was he not the owner? I guess he wasn't. I just kind of assumed he was the owner. Provide what you promise, can't do that. Port report, port report, port report. Explore. 
Sure. Gain to tear. Ugh. Hold on, is this new? Or has this happened before? Mm. No, this is new. You round a darkened corner and start down a broad boulevard lined with grimacing statues. There's a fluttering movement above, and a cloud of frost moths swoop down upon you. You beat them off with your walking stick. They are determined, and largest are the size of Z-Bats, but they are fragile. At last they retreat, leaving three of their numbers melting into water on the pavement. Their wings are marked with patterns that resemble letters. You peer at them, but the script is already dissolving. What the hell? Frost moths that melt? What the... Hold on. Wings are marked with patterns that resemble letters. So creatures of the cold with letters written all over them. Symbols. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? What the hell is this? Monstrous Almanac. Oh, hold on. Just to follow up on that thought. They, that sounds familiar. That sounds familiar because of... Partially because of the Codex and also partially because of the Avid Horizon. Because the Avid Horizon is like the place where cold comes from. And I know the Codex has lots of writing over everything. I don't know. That's weird. Anyway, yeah, I need to add all this stuff to my... My little list of trade goods and their prices. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. There we go. I've gone ahead and added the stuff. And I didn't add everything. There's some stuff like fuel and supplies and recent news and all that stuff that I didn't add and that's just because I don't really think of them as trade goods for the most part. And they're, they're not things that I'm really gonna... At least I don't feel like I'm gonna need to search for them. So I'm just gonna leave them out just to save time. I might regret it one day, but we'll see. Anyway, I was wondering about this. This monstrous almanac. A stack of notebooks closely written in treasure ink. Pages plus seven. It sells for a thousand. Pages plus seven is really good. But it equips to auxiliary. Do I have that slot open? Oh, that's where I have my torpedo nets. Hmm. I still don't even know how the torpedo nets work, to be honest. It says deploy these in combat for unparalleled protection against torpedoes, but I've never seen the deploy option. Are they just automatic? Or do you need the torpedo components? But the thing is, I thought the torpedo components were for shooting torpedoes, not for stopping torpedoes. So, I don't know, maybe it's automatic or something. Anyway, I think it's time to go. Hopefully we can get into some combat with some bats or something along the way to reduce my tear. You really don't want high tear when you're going out into the darkness. There's already enough fear to go around for everybody. So yeah, it is time to explore. So I'm gonna hit up Fallen London and buy some supplies. Which is good, because, oh wow, we're actually... Wow, we're about to starve. I really need to get to London, like, now. You know what really surprises me? I just realized something. You know how, um... Who is it? There you go, the, the tireless mechanic. He increases fuel efficiency by 5%. How come the cook doesn't decrease hunger by like 5% or something? You know, because he's a really good cook and he knows exactly what to do with ingredients to get the most out of them or something? It's actually kind of surprising. Alright. I hope I don't starve before I get back. Like, I'm... Right there. I'm almost, almost back. Uh, please don't starve. Please don't starve. We're pull. We're literally pulling into the dock. Come on. Eh, eh. Okay, so it's not an issue until. Okay, so we can go to zero. That's fine. All right. Good to know. Messages, someone wants to sign on, I don't care. Port report. Oh yes, let's uh, 
Karaus in Wolfstack Docks. I was fortunate. Lost five terror. Now have recent news. Sea shanties, fine food, and the warmth of a pub fire. And something more. Something more? What would that be? Oh! Romance? That night in Wolfstack, you find yourself sharing a table with... I get to choose. Hmm. So, a woman, a man, or a one-night stand whose name I don't want to know, basically. <laughs> hmm. Let's go with a likely lass. She tipsily claims to be a spy. Whatever she is, she's easy to like, and when the evening ends, you're still together. Un <laughs> Some of these are so weird. Unlocked with no more than zero times a locket with a dapper chap's portrait. I mean, what? So I can only do this if I don't have a locket with a dapper chap's portrait. I don't get it. Okay. I guess that's the lock. Lock. Oh, if you have a locket for one of them, you can't, like, cheat on them or something? I'm not sure. Anyway. An interlude. The next morning, she gives you a pewter locket. As you reach for it, she grips it briefly in her fist. Don't you dare forget me, she says. I won't? Is that a threat? Okay, so I guess I can come back to see her next time I'm in London. Cool. Do, 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 nothing to do there. I think we just need to buy supplies and be on our way. Okay, plenty of fuel. Yeah, fuel is no problem. Uh, I'm just going to buy as many supplies as possible. In fact, I kind of need more supplies than that. That's actually too little. Uh, there we go. I know it seems a little bit kind of lopsided since we're going to burn through the fuel a lot faster than the supplies. However, I do have a plan for that. And that plow. Ha ha. What? Hi. The brisk campaigner collapses. One moment, she's lecturing an apologetic sailor on personal hygiene. The next, she's stretched full length on the deck. And by the time you reach her, she's regaining consciousness. What happened? Um. Mm, let's see, I can't do that. You're indisposed, so it's one of these. You have not won her trust. If you cannot do so immediately or don't care to, she will leave the ship. Well, I don't want that. Okay, so I need to uh, spend a secret to do this. Good thing I saved some. Ask her if she's been to the Elder Continent. Hint at what might be wrong. You have your suspicions. Do I? Yes, it's called... Anamescence? Anamescence? In the Elder Continent, there is a flame that burns souls. My soul caught alight. It only smolders. Souls burn long and slow, but long before it is consumed, it will sizzle my brain and bake my heart. No, it's not dangerous to anyone else. Until I die. You should give my body to the sea when that happens. Yes, there's little danger. I apologize deeply. I should have told you. I've been selfish, but you might have refused my service, and I hope still there are things out there on the Z that will save me. Well, geez, I hope so. So her soul is burning in the Elder Continent? What the hell? I, what do you even do about that? How does that even happen? Can tell her to get off the ship. Nah. What do you need? If I... I swear to you that no matter what happens next, I will keep no other secrets from you. She pauses to think. No secrets of my own. I am a doctor, yet. You have my deepest thanks. My very deepest. May we adjourn to your cabin to discuss the matter in private? Of course. 
Uh, let's see, what do I need? I need Mirror 71 to do this. Interesting, I'm actually pretty close to that. Or I can find a cure, but that needs... Oh man, that needs a bunch of stuff. Solace Fruit. Muter Salt, Strange Catch. Docile Blemigan. What the hell? What? What is your... How is that going to cure anything? That's just weird. What is this proposition? Because this seems more plausible. Perhaps it's the Animescence. Perhaps... Yes, alright. I'm afraid of death. But now you come to mention it, I am restless. The campaigner respects insight and has no patience with crassness. Ensure your mirrors is at least 20 points higher than your iron. That should not be a problem. What if it wasn't 20 points higher? Hmm. Anyway, I'm actually pretty close to that, so I guess if I keep saving my secrets and using them for... Let's see, who... you? Yeah, I can increase my mirrors with you. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. Anyway, as I was saying before, the reason I have more... Uh, supplies then fuel is because what oh god there's something else you stand on the bridge with the likely lasses locket in your hand keep it or throw it away I'm not gonna throw it away that's just cruel let's keep it it's a risk for both of you shorebound lovers grow lonely and Z captains die young close your hand over the locket the Z air is cold, but the heat of your blood has warmed the metal of the locket. Keep it close. You have a sweetheart in London. Ah. I wonder if she knows I'm a vampire. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh yes, the reason I have... <laughs> the reason I have more... Uh more supplies and fuel kind of proportionally than I would normally go for is because I'm going to be hitting up the Iron Republic, which sells fuel. So yeah, I'm going to hit up the Iron Republic and then just go straight east, right into the darkness. Aw, oh, the crap is stuck. Let me dislodge it. From life. Wait, what's that? There's something under the water. Or, there was. Pay the fisherman for a port report. Thank you. Explore a shore. A glittering eye. You turn, and there's a long, lank brown man at your shoulder. Listen, he says. I have a story for you. Oh, it's this again. Yeah, let's turn this around again. No, I have a story for you. Use my tale of terror in my Z story. Yep, gained 50 fragments, lost two terror. It's worth it. Whoops. And of course I wouldn't mind getting into some combat. I'm gonna test out my new guns.
Report, report. I can actually travel to the surface. And have one fuel left over. Mm, no thanks. Let's get some, uh, what is it? I think I get a move in the great game from this. Oh no, this gives me a vision of the surface. I think I've done that before, so I'm not going to bother reading it. I think we're good, yep. Hmm. Eh, not worth it. Disengage. Let's go to the Iron Republic, get some fuel, and then head east. Oh, you're coming back? Okay. I don't know why I shot. That was stupid. Scoop it up. One supply, thank you. Yeah, all this combat has reduced my terror really low. 19. Started out at around 50 when I left London. Oh, hello. Whoa, 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 whoa. Shit, I'm not in range, am I? Uh, I do not want to be the one being chased. That is very bad. Alright. Yes, turn around. Thank you. Fuck it, I'm going in. Uh, yeah, I didn't think I could turn around fast enough. Alright, let's get in behind it. Try to slow it down. I'm gonna try to get behind it before I can shoot. Uh, I think it's gonna get to shoot. Yep. Oh, it missed. Oh man, that thing could turn really fast. Oh wait. Oh, there we go. Ow. Here we go. Here we go. Good position. I can do this all day. Not bad, took 11 damage. I thought for a second it was going to back up into the into Adam's doom. <laughs> that would have been interesting to see. Fragments of clay litter across the deck. They crunch underfoot like pot shards. Or pot shards. Unfinished men do not surrender. Oh. These are the unfinished revolutionaries. The unfinished clay men. <laughs> An intriguingly lumpy sack. It's probably not a sack full of skulls. Oh. Dark drop coffee. We could run the boilers on this stuff, your second engineer remarks, if when we run out of coke. He sees your expression, and hastens to add, We couldn't. We couldn't. Please don't put the coffee in the firebox, Captain. It'd be a shocking waste. Not sure why it put me in combat. Port report. Cavalry doctrine is open for business. Lost a page? What? Okay. I don't think I want to make port reports here anymore.
That's really bad. You don't want to lose pages. Those are pretty hard to get. I can sell the Memento More. No. Cavalry Doctrine? Do I want to check that out? Well, let's buy some fuel first. Well, actually, there's no reason to buy it first. Alright, sure. Let's do this. Gained one terror, that's fine. You can sell supplies for 25? Interesting, because you can actually buy them for 20 at London. That's not bad. Dark Top Coffee Beans, 38. Well, just want some fuel. And I know I tend to run out of fuel, so I'm just going to go ahead and fill out my hold all the way. I don't think I have these in my list. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to my list, and I'll be right back. There we go. Went ahead and added the two interesting things, the Zoop and the Sack of Dark Drop Coffee Beans. And I notice that the Zoop can be sold for 77 and you can actually buy Zoop at, where is it, Mount Palmerston? Yeah, you can actually buy Zoop at Mount Palmerston for 70. So that's a 7 profit margin. Which, for a ship of my size, is completely pointless, because you'd actually spend more than that, far more than that, in just fuel and supplies. However, if you had a merchant ship, that could actually be a pretty good profit margin. Hmm, maybe. I think the merchant ships have a hold of 200... 100 times 7, 700, eh, maybe. It'd probably be decent. There's probably better things out there that you could trade for, though, with better margins. Okay, so, holds completely full, plenty of fuel. Yeah, let's go. Alright, leave the lights on for now. Let's just go straight east. See what's in the darkness. The darkness. Oh. Hold on, how many hit points do you have? Lights off. I really want to know how many hit points you have first. 400, okay, no. No, 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 no. I could probably take them, but it's not worth it. Can't forget the z, z What the hell? God damn it, stupid old tabbed out. Anyway, we're back. I have this stupid plugin in one of my browsers that auto updates and it automatically opens a web page when it updates. And that's what occasionally tabs me out and brings up my web browser, driving me crazy. I hate that. Anyway, I wasn't paying attention. Did I get anything with my uh, Z bat? Some more lavacious region. Oh, look at this. Looks like there used to be something here. A tower, some steps. The Z here is warm. Bubbles rise and burst with lazy menace. The fire in the earth is restless. Something was once here. I'm surprised I found nothing yet. Okay, this is kind of creepy. Nothing? I mean, look at how dense it is up here. And I've gone all this way, and there's nothing around here. Makes me think there's nothing but monsters here. Like it's not even habitable. Whoa. What is that? The Utter Shroom. Oh, that's gotta be the... <laughs> the Place of Shrooms. Anytime I see a new thing, my first thought is, Oh my god, it's a massive Z-Beast, it's gonna fucking eat me. But, nope. Just shrooms. I mean, maybe they're beast shrooms that will actually eat me. But they're probably not. Whoa, this place is cool. Uh, 
wake everybody everybody up for my arrival, piss them off. The queenly core of this spore-haunted sea. Climb the fungal fiber ladders to its summit. Shaggy, suspicious villagers scratch a, scratch a living here amidst endless clouds of spores and scurrying mobs of plant-animal hybrids. None of them ever leave. Monsters, one explains darkly. Z, full of monsters. Yep, that's, that's true. Hmm. So, port report, trade honey, or visit the village. Let's gather some intelligence. What happens here? On top of a mushroom the size of... Marlboro. I don't know what that is. Other than seeming like vaguely like the cigarette brand. Except spelled kind of differently. A slow survey. The villagers live in a shabby but live a shabby but sufficient life. The utter shroom provides. They are secretive, taciturn, incurious. Ships rarely visit. Hmm. They just don't care. Sounds like an exciting place. Go ahead and visit the village. Hospitable? Not exactly. But they usually don't chase you off with sticks, and they usually let you sit beside their mildew-smelling fire. A Day of Stories. The central contradiction of Shroomer existence. They hate the utter shroom, but they do anything to avoid leaving. Monsters! Today, they're telling the story of how they came here. It features a shipwreck. A rain of orange jewels. The mother's blessing. There's a great deal about ad about adversity and survival. And wistful hints about their homeland. Somewhere to the west. To the west? I've been to the west. I've also been south. Are they talking about the fungal jungle? Hmm. Hold on. I mean, directly west is the Iron Republic, but there is... What's this place called? Name isn't popping up for some reason. But this is a place that had the fungal jungle, and there's a lots, there's lots of fungus. I wonder if I could, like, take them back or something. Like, hey, dudes, your, your home's over here. Want to jump aboard? And what the hell is Zalo's Town? I don't even remember that place. Weird. Anyway. Trade honey. Honey, a shroomer explains. Everyone wants honey. Life on the utter shroom is unvarying and occasionally deadly poisonous. The shroomers are desperate for the diversion that prisoners' honey can bring, but vague about what they can pay in return. Supplies, though, at least. Wait, supplies? It looks like they're going to pay me in... Blemigans. A firkin of prisoner's honey for a Blemigan, I guess. Hmm. A firkin of prisoner's honey. I think that's pretty cheap, actually. Let me check. Let's check. Let's look for firkin. Firkin, firkin, firkin. Uh, oh, that's only to sell at Gator's Morn. Firkin of red honey. Oh, that's it. Okay, so yeah, I don't actually have any places listed where you can buy a firkin of prisoner's honey. Only where you can sell them. However, the fact that you can sell a firkin of prisoner's honey for 26 echo at Gator's Morn means that it must be pretty cheap. It can't be that much more expensive than the selling price. Probably 40 or 50 at most. Okay. No shop? Wow. This place is... bland. Very bland. I guess, keep going east? Sure. Plenty of supplies, plenty of fuel.
Reef of Roses. Northeast. Ooh, sounds cool. Not too far away. Let's go check it out. Sounds freaking beautiful, actually. Whoa, what's, what's that? Oh, not monsters? No, not monsters. Whoa! The Alfirox Channel. This is beautiful. That is just beautiful. Alright, so I guess there's nowhere to dock here. It's pretty to look at, though. Sea of Lilies, northeast. I remember I went there in my last life, right? Yeah, I did. Oh, might as well hit it up again. I see you, shark. Do I want to fight you? It's a particularly tormented bound shark. Uh, I mean, the hit point seems fine. I think it's going to go under the water, though, and make it hard for me to actually shoot it. I'd probably want Strange Catch to bring it to the surface. So, no. Don't think it's worth it. I love cats. Damn it, I just came up, and now you want me to go down? Lame. I really want to buy some supplies. Please don't lick me, poisonous frogs. I don't actually know if they're poisonous, but they're probably poisonous. I mean, this is Sunless Sea, come on. I'm discovering so many things. Fragments, fragments, fragments. Yeah, let's go check out the Isle of Cats. This place is... Also beautiful. And I don't believe I've actually ever been to this place. Where there are roses. A scatter of yellow lit honey dens and brightly painted ale houses. To the southeast rises the stone towers of Cavendish Abbey, its ramparts hung with crimson and gold banners. There are sailors from all across the Neath hauling cargo, dicing and brawling good-naturedly on the docks. The air carries the sound of Z shanties sung with more enthusiasm than skill, and the smell of roses edged with brimstone. Wait, have I been here before? This sounds vaguely familiar. Hmm. Cell sunlight? What the hell? Need a sunlight-filled mirror gauge box. It's a high-risk challenge, too. 22%? Ugh. Alright, there's a bunch of stuff here. Let's see, oh, hold on, let's check the shops. Supplies. Supplies are pretty expensive. Probably gonna buy some, though. Um, let's get a port report. You spend half a day observing the docks and note an astonishing number and variety of ships. Was that a Canate Tremarian nestled beside a vessel from the Iron Republic? The dockhands complain loudly that they have never been busier. The caddies talk ceaselessly and carelessly about smuggling and piracy, but even the most hardened sailors lower their voices when they mention the king. They go even quieter when they talk about the Rose Garden. You make careful notes. Perhaps the Admiralty will understand what they mean, even if you don't. Hmm. 
some weird thing I can do if I have a key to the cage garden. Piratical welcome. Welcome to the Isle of Cats, the wide-eyed dock master says brightly. Would you like to bribe me not to write down your details in this nice official ledger? Well, given that it costs five echo. Sure. You hand over the coins, and she tips you a sharp smile before waving you to the nearest alehouse. The entire process is straightforwardly corrupt, and pleasingly efficient. Yay, now they're suspicious. It's okay, though. I think it was worth it. Oh, look at all this. The alehouse's sign is a tiger painted the color of rose petals. Someone has gone to great trouble and expense to gild the creature's eyes. They look out over the port, feral and unseeing. A caged hive of lamplighter, uh, lamplighter bees hang from the ceiling like a chandelier. A few sailors give you hard-mouthed, assessing looks, but most ignore your presence entirely. Hmm. There's a bunch of things I can do. Significant tokens. The caddies all wear a pair of amber stones threaded around their necks, or pinned to their collars. Cat's eyes, one of them says, for the Pirate King. As far as you can gather, the Pirate King's name is Leopold, and he controls all the trade on the island. Half of the caddies believe that he can take the form of a crimson tiger and creep into their dreams. The other half suspect, more prosaically, that he simply eats those who displease him. <laughs> that seems more likely. A whispered conversation, the clink of coins, an exchange of goods. The merest taste. You turn your head as though you are admiring one of the moldering draperies hung from the wall. A vial flashes in the buyer's trembling hands. He uncorks it, pours a few drops of thick red liquid down his throat. The vial drops to the floor. When you look back up, he is gone. You blink and look around. Nobody else seems in the least perturbed that a man disappeared from their midst. You pick up the fallen vial and examine the traces left inside. Sticky honey gleaming with redness entirely unlike blood. Entirely unlike blood? Is that sarcasm? Is that a crimson veiled nun? But what sort of nun would be in a place like this? A mellifrous sister, of course, she responds, performing a complicated negotiation between a veil, thick glove, and a glass of mushroom wine. You ask what one of those is, and she snorts. I'm glaring at you underneath this bloomin' veil. You act appropriately cowed, and the mellifrous sister thaws a little. We are beekeepers and honey harvesters. The caddies owe their prosperity to us, and the pirate king too. She slurps the last of the mushroom wine behind her veil, and the barkeep glides over to refill her glass. Eyes respectfully downcast. Hmm. So the mellifrous sisters are the suppliers of this place's trade goods. Well, I guess that's it. Make sure you've learned all you wish to before you leave this place. Yep, let's go. The barkeep stops you before you reach the door, and hands you a brooch set with two amber stones. He waits impassively until you pin it to your clothes. Everybody wears the cat's eyes here, he tells you, moving his eye to let you pass. Just a friendly reminder that the Pirate King is watching. It seems that no place, then, is truly lawless. An occurrence! Your Isle of Cats, the Pirate King's notice quality, is now one. You are almost entirely beneath his notice. Yay! Hmm. Now there's a bunch of things I can do. Still can't buy a shipment, but... Man, I would love to buy a shipment. Oh, 600 Echo? Holy crap. 
That would be almost all my money. Well, we don't even need to worry about it at the moment. Let's let's do that later. Hmm. The honeyed tongue. It's both a brothel and a honey den, run by someone the caddies refer to as the King's Claw. Now let's go speak with the Mellifrous Sisters at Cavendish Abbey. Oh, well, this place is pretty filled with events. Cool. I like it. The Mellifrous Sisters make their home in the richly appointed stone tower of Cavendish Abbey. Their thick gloves and crimson mesh helmets are worn, less for modesty and more for practicality. They tend the hives of the lamplighter bees all across the aisle and make a religious observance of harvesting red honey for the Pirate King. Your actions will attract the Pirate King's notice. You need five times Pirate King's notice to gain an offer from a patron. Sounds like I can start working for them. Which would be excellent. I could definitely use some work. Hmm. Gossip. Fuel. Five fuel. I could spare it. I'd rather not, though. Ooh, news. Perfect. Yeah, no problem giving you news. You recite your news to the abbess, your voice stuttering every now and then in the cool silence of her office. Her face is entirely obscured by her thick veil, and it is impossible to read her reactions. Nonetheless, you must have pleased her. She orders one of her novices to load your ship with casks of mushroom wine. Ooh. Thank you. The abbey overlooks the rose garden, and so you make a point to, ling to linger at the windows. The roses bloom lush and wanton, each petal the color of sunset. A tall woman in a golden veil picks her way between the thorn bushes. Huh. Gained more of the king's notice. Now it's two. More passing awareness than notice, really. <laughs> I love the little, like, snide remarks in your, uh, your social standing. Yeah, so five a cask of uh, five casks of mushroom wine is really good for one recent news. Like that is ridiculously good. Not that it sells for that much, but the thing is, I can actually take this mushroom wine and go sell it at Godfall, because that's exactly the amount they want. They want five, and they'll pay me for it. Which actually might not be too far away. I'm not sure. Do I want to give them fuel? I don't know. I don't want to part with that. Lamentable relic? Yeah, don't mind parting with that. Let's gossip over the relic, I suppose. She is only a recent novice, and barely even inducted into the lower apistic mysteries. Still, she has some useful information to impart. The recent destabilization of the red honey trade elsewhere has been fortuitous for the Isle of Cats. Honey production can barely meet demand. The abbess and the Lady of the Gardens are having some kind of dispute over staffing, of all things. Hmm. Now my notice is three. Your antiques. <laughs> Your antiques. My antiques intrigue. My antics intrigue, rather. And I think I need five to make something happen, right? Yeah, five to do that. So, you know what? Let's keep using my Lamentable Relics. Ooh. One more. There we go. Notice is five. You have his attention. The Lady of the Garden's Offer. Her name, she says, is Zayra. You should use it. We have not met, have we? No, this is definitely the first time, but... Hmm... The Lady of the Cages shakes her head sharply. Best to proceed as if it is the first, don't you think? A veil of gold mesh obscures only her eyes, leaving her glistening, bitten lips bare. Perhaps a hundred small silver keys jangle in a bunch at her left hip. I think we should be friends. I'm very important, you know? Or, I was. No, still am, she pauses. Yes, I'm quite sure I still am. Hmm, she seems... nervous. 
accept her offer. You may only have one patron on the Isle of Cats. Choose well. It is always useful to be friends with important people, even if they're hazy on the subject. You are quite busy at the moment, and possibly your grandmother is ill. <laughs> Refuser. Yeah, good excuse. Hmm. I mean, I could always talk to her later, right? Um... Let's not do this right now. Zayra takes your refusal in stride. Maybe you'll rethink things once your grandmother is feeling recovered. Is it sciatica? Or fluke flu? Both? You don't say. My sympathies. <laughs> okay. She actually bought it, apparently. Is that the only thing I can do? Hmm. Yeah, so I can accept her offer at any point. If I didn't want to take her offer, then what could I do? Let's let's check out the honey tongue. Maybe there's something else here. Entering the brothel is like sliding into the dreams of a surface orientalist. Jewel embroidered cushions, bright silk drapes, gilded statues of elephants, sun bears, and clouded leopards. Silver censers release curling plumes of rose scented smoke into the air. The courtesans are red-lipped and coal-smudged. When you catch their eyes, they smile back at you with professional interest. A meeting with the King's Claw. The Claw keeps a suite in a maze of corridors above the brothel. Hmm. Unlocked with Isle of Cats, Iceri's patronage no more than zero. So I guess I couldn't do this meeting if I had a... if I was her patron? Or... if she was my patron? I'm not quite sure how patronage works. Don't patronize me! Ask what red honey is. Hmm. Sure. One of the nearby courtesan's eyebrows lifts infatis... Inf how do you pronounce that? Infatesimally. Infatesimally? Something like that. But his reply is practiced. When lamplighter bees suck the nectar of the crimson strain of exile's rose, they are driven to madness. They enter the brain of humans and harvest their memories. He shudders, as though imagining the process himself. Those memories are instilled in red honey. Each sip is a burst of memory on the tongue. Deliciously awful, isn't it? He flutters his dyed feather fan. What the fuck? Lamplighter's bees suck the nectar of the crimson strain of exile's rose. Then they're driven to madness. They enter the brains of humans and harvest their memories. What the fuck? I mean, I figured like nothing in Sunless Sea is, is pleasant. Everything has a horrible origin, but my god. I could never have imagined. How do they enter the brains of humans? Like, how does that happen? Do I want to know? Is it like getting a bee sting? Like, you're just, you're just like going for a walk and instead of a bee stinging your arm, it just like goes into your ear and... I don't even know. Well, Let's go for a meeting with the King's Claw. Rar. The King's Claw tells you, uh, tells you to call them Isery or Isery. They are dressed in azure silk, and wearing clawed rings of enameled metal and ivory on the fingers of their right hand. They are very beautiful, if you like them sharp and glittering and ambiguously gendered. You have got the interest of the Pirate King, and therefore my interest as well, they say, fixing you with an amber-eyed gaze. You seem capable enough, and I have need of a capable friend. Hmm. Alright, so it's either you... Or her. Hmm. Hmm. I feel like they have more power 
than, what was her name? Lady of the Cages. I feel like they have more power than the Lady of the Cages, because it sounds like she was nervous and wasn't sure if she still had, like, significant social standing. However, they kind of creep me out, and she doesn't. Plus, you know, I kind of like an underdog story. Maybe I can help her rise up in the ranks again. I'm going to go with her. Let's accept her offer. You should come back last... Wait. You should come back last Tuesday for another little chat. She pauses and huffs. No, that's not quite it. <clears throat> come back soon? Another time. Pick a good one. There aren't enough of those. That was probably a dismissal? Yeah, what, <laughs> what the hell is wrong with her? Come back last Tuesday for another little chat. What? Do you understand how time works? I don't know, maybe she's related to Abnaxus or something from The Longest Journey. Time does not flow for her like it does for mortal humans. Okay. When you enter, the Lady of the Cages is sitting on the windowsill, staring out at her gardens. On the desk is an open casket. Within are ten gleaming vials of red honey, carefully packed. Freshly harvested by the Melliferous Sisters. Touch them. Go on. They're still warm from the honey spinner. Zayra turns toward you. They are for the Merchant Venturer over in London. You'll take them for me, won't you? Unless you already have? No, clearly not. No. Oh, they're for the, mor the Merchant Venturer? Perfect. I've been trying to do his quests, but I just haven't had access to the, the trade market in the Canate to buy the, the, the romance that he wants. Excellent. And yeah, she, she's just... There's something very weird about her. Unless you already have. As if she doesn't know whether I've done it before or not. Is she just forgetful or... No. There's something weird about time with her. It doesn't seem to be just forgetting, but she doesn't seem to understand time as I do. It's very strange. Hmm. Let's accept. You are hardly squeamish about smuggling red honey. If you change your mind, you could always turn the shipment over to the Admiralty instead. Yeah, I hope they don't search my ship. Because apparently it's a uh, restricted good. I'll do it. Although, before I do that, do I even have room? How many vials? I've got eight slots. I'm going to need to dump this mushroom wine. Let's see, how many? Ten gleaming vials. Okay, I don't have enough room. Unless... Well, let's just accept it. It might just be like a single item. Like a single casket, or... Yeah, let's just see what happens. Yeah, so it's not even like a normal item, it's like a... It's something else. Do say hello to the merchant venturer for me, won't you? He was such an awful child. Zayra's lips curve into something like a smile. I drank the memories of someone that went to school with him. You must make some sort of sound, because she gives you a little shrug. I like to know my business partners. It was Leopold's idea, of course. He's very thorough. Wait, so she had somebody track down vials of honey that had memories of somebody that went to school with him so that she could better scout out her trade partner. That is kind of insane and also kind of awesome. Alright, so now I'm smuggling a proscribed cargo of red honey. Okay, okay. How much room is that? Yeah, so it's just a curiosity. It's not technically an item, so it doesn't take up too much room. Which is very, very good. Be cautious in taking it to London. Hmm. Do you think they'll search me? 
But if I don't pick, take it back to London, then what the hell am I going to do with it? Maybe. Let's see. So, Gator's Morn actually allows me to sell a firkin of red honey. But this isn't a firkin that I have, it's something else. It's a, it's vials of red honey. So, I don't know if I could actually sell that at Gator's Morn. But even if I did that, she obviously would hate me. She would never trust me again. We wouldn't have a business relationship because this is not what I'm supposed to be doing with it. I'm supposed to be taking it back to London. So, yeah. I'm not going to let her down. Whoops. No, don't rename it. Wait, I think I have to. No, I don't want to... Shit. <laughs> I have to rename it now. It's Charlotte, right? That's what it says. Okay, we're good. Alright, anyway. Oh my god, I think I better end this episode. I did not intend for it to be this long. Dear god. I just wanted, uh... You know, I wanted some good exploration to be gotten in before the end of the episode, since that's what I said I was doing in this episode. And, uh... I didn't expect the Isle of Cats to be so full of... adventure. I'm happy it is, though, because this is very cool. Very, very cool. Anyway... I'll continue my adventures next episode, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.